when you have an essay question and you've got to create a thesis, there are three things that you have to do, three steps. You could even call it a thesis. Um, firstly, what you're going to do with the question is you're going to identify the key words or the key parts of the question. Generally, there's going to be two. Um, just depends on the, the nature of the question, but you want to be able to identify that. Once you've identified those keywords, the second thing you want to do is define them so you're really clear about what they mean. So you've got to think about them and say, okay, well, in the sense of what we've been learning in that module, um, this is what I understand these words to mean. Okay, and you've got to come up with something clear in that regard. And then the third thing you're going to do is find. Try and find a connection between these words. So I've got here, how do they fit together? Is there a, rela a relationship between those words? So there might be like a, a cause and effect, so one thing might lead to the other. Um, it's good to try and find that, and quite often in questions, the, they are written in that sense that one part of the question is going to lead to the, to the second part. So the three steps are to identify, to define, and then find that relationship. Once you've done that, then you can start looking at how to build that, that response. So we've got a practice question here. How does Shakespeare construct his play to portray challenging ideas about courage? So I think the key words for me would be this idea of constructing the play to portray, and I'm thinking that he's portraying the challenging ideas, and obviously the third thing I think is important, the third word is courage. So we want to look at those and say, okay, is there a relationship between these words? Construct, portray, courage. Um, so we've identified the words, now we want to define them. So when we're talking about construct, I think that he's really talking about is using drama and the device, the dramatic devices of drama to as the vehicle for him to present these challenging ideas. Okay, um, so we've got construct now. We're looking at this idea of portraying challenging ideas. Well, he's representing ideas, perhaps in using dramatic devices to represent um, uh, these challenging ideas. So he's using a fictional story and as a means of enabling truths to be revealed. And then we've got this word courage, and I'm thinking, well, bravery, determination, these are personal qualities. Okay, so we've defined what we think those words are, and really, so what we're saying is that it's the dramatic devices that Shakespeare uses um, in a fictional realm creates truth about personal qualities. So obviously that's um, speaking to the audience, whether the, it be the contemporary audience or the modern audience. So my thesis coming out of these ideas is this. The skillful use of dramatic form enables Shakespeare to challenge traditional notions of courage, which is relevant to contemporary and modern audiences alike. So really, um, I've got this idea is it's the skillful use, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of qualifying how well he does it. And what he's doing is he's challenging these traditional notions of courage. And so obviously that's going to allow me to say, well, what is courageous about um, the ideas that are explored in the play is that maybe the protagonist doesn't go down the normal path of, of the traditional way of doing things. He's bringing a new... Um, um, a new idea, um, you know, and that's that's what's really courageous. Breaking away from tradition and trying something new is is courageous. And I'm aware, as I said before, of this notion of it being relevant to a contemporary audience, but also to a modern audience as well. And and so that's going to encompass everything that I'm going to be arguing within my essay. So every point that I make in my paragraph is going to be directed at saying that the way in which Shakespeare challenges those traditional notions of courage, he shapes it through drama um, to create a meaningful message for, for the audience of the day. Here's a question from the 2019 HSC from Paper 1, the Human Experience question. And the question is this, to what extent does the exploration of the human experience in your text invite you to reconsider your understanding of courage. So we're going to use our three steps of identify, define and find. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the key words of the question. So to what extent does the exploration of the human experience in your text, so that's saying, you know, you're like you're reading the text, um, uh, you're exploring the notion of human experience, so that's all general. But we've got this word invite you to reconsider your understanding of courage. So I think the three words we've got here are invite, reconsider, and courage. So when, when we look at those, now we, what we want to do is we want to define those words. So um, uh, what we can do is we can look and say, well, um, uh, you know, what are some synonyms for these words? So we could say challenge, um, summons. What else have I got there? I've got persuade, ask. That type of thing. Um, and then we can think for reconsider, we're going to say rethink, reassess, um, maybe revise. And then for courage, we're looking at words like bravery, grit, it's an interesting word, um, and maybe perseverance. So we're starting to say, well, how does the study of your novel or film or drama, um, how does it challenge you to rethink your understanding about what bravery is? Okay, and so this starts to um, get us um, thinking about the, the, um, the notion of the question. So what we could do is we could then say, well, let's write the, rewrite the question in my own words, so, um, so we could say something like, how does the, we'll put novel, how does the novel challenge readers to um, rethink, or will we put reassess, let's put reassess, reassess um, their ideas about, let's just keep it at courage, because <clears throat> we know that courage is about bravery and perseverance. So how does the novel challenge readers to reassess their ideas about courage? So we stripped away all this stuff about the exploration of the human experience, because that's all just a given, let's just strip that out. So how does the novel challenge readers to reassess their ideas about courage? Okay, so then from here we want to find a relationship between um, these words. And I, I suppose one thing we have to do as well is we have to think about this idea of courage and say, well, where does the bravery um, demonstrate itself within the, the text? So is it within the protagonist? So is, it, is that where the courage comes from? So that's certainly... Um, one thing that you're going to look at, you're going to look at the, you know, obviously you're going to um, have contextualise the story that you're, um, the text that you're developing and uh, that you're studying, and you're going to look at the um, the reasoning of, around the protagonist and why they're behaving the way they are, and looking at how the novel shapes that, how um, the or well, techniques of form are going to present that. So that's one thing that you could do. Or you could take a more, um, a, a broader sort of um, approach to this and talk about writing stories of <clears throat> whatever is an act of courage. So depending on the text, it might be, like if you're talking about Billy Elliot and you think about um, the ideas of um, acceptance and, um, you know, breaking out of traditional gender roles and behaviours and expectations, or maybe it is an act of courage and bravery to tell this story. So you can focus your argument uh, on that level as well, which would be an interesting approach. 
Um, and obviously for uh, a novel like All the Light We Cannot See, you'd be saying, well, by writing the, um, the marginalised narratives of the stories of war, and they come in conflict, conflict with the dominant narratives, well, that's an act of courage. So um, you've got to think about that and say, well, where do I want the, um, the, um, my argument to go? Most of us are going to look at the protagonist, but there is this opportunity of looking at the, the telling of, of um, historical fictions from the perspective of the marginalised, or telling um, fictional stories like Billy Elliot from a marginalised perspective, which would you know, bring this um, idea of, of being an act of courage um, to the front of the argument, which would be a really interesting thing to explore. Okay, so we're in formulating some theses for these ideas. If we're looking at characters, we can say the perseverance of central characters in the face of hardship invite readers to reassess what qualities one must possess to be courageous. So I'm using the idea of invite. Um, we've got the word reassess and we've got courage in there and that's important so that's one thing that we can look at and so obviously I'm saying it's the perseverance of the central characters in this face of hardship and that might be to do with gender identity it might to do with um, you know surviving war that type of thing depending on what the, the story is so that's one way of building a, a thesis if we're looking at that one about um, the, the writing a fictional story is an act of courage Fictional stories are courageous acts as they challenge the traditional belief of society, beliefs of society. And by revealing the personal motivations of individuals, readers must reassess what qualities are required to be deemed courageous. So um, I've got the word, I suppose, challenge in there. So that's where I was going with the inviting. That was one of my synonyms. Um, and then I've got this idea of readers must reassess what, what courage is about. Let's keep going. It's not a bad idea to throw around a couple um, of thesis statements. And, you know, obviously you're going to do this when you have time to do it. You can't really do it in an exam. But uh, the, the, the process is really important. The more you do this when you practice, when you get to the exam, you've got that depth of experience so you're able to do it in a quick, snappy manner. I'm pretty much saying the same thing again, but I've just re rephrased things. Through exploring the actions and reasoning of characters in fictional stories, readers are invited to reassess what qualities are required to be deemed courageous. Um, we could say it's the motivation of characters. We're exploring the motivations of characters, what causes them to act the way that they do, and that invites readers to reassess what courage is. So that's about characters, about protagonists. This one's about the act of writing fictional stories again. Writing fictional stories are acts of courage as they challenge the dominant assumptions concerning who are the true leaders in our world and I'm implying here that um, the true leaders of the world are courageous and you'd build that into your argument. So we're identifying the keywords, we're defining what they are and then we're trying to find that relationship so we can build that thesis. When we look at this last one, this is a good point to make. A thesis is different to your introduction. Obviously, if we take this thesis statement here, we're going to use that as the basis of our, of our introduction. So we will, we will set up our, the beginning of our introduction talking about writing fictional stories being an act of courage. Um, and that we're talking about leaders in our world. And then what we're going to do is introduce our text in a paragraph and talk about um, that, that it's the way in which the, the novel reveals um, through the textual form, the way the novel reveals how these characters are um, uh, courageous and how that um, using that wartime setting or the, the in Billy, Billy Elliot, the 1980s, Britain setting enables uh, audiences to to question their their own understandings of what courage is and apply it to their world. So yes, once we've got that thesis, then we have to move into to writing that introduction. And in your introduction, um, particularly in the advanced course, 
you're going to be writing about a page um, for your introduction where you're really setting up your case. So you've got your thesis statement, this is what I'm going to argue, and then you've got to lay the foundations. You've got that idea, you're going to contextualise um, the text that you're talking about, and you're going to just outline the, the, um, the ideas of, of what your essay is going to be about. The best thing you can do now is go and look at some questions that are relevant to what you're studying. Take a question, run through that process of identify, define and find, and start writing those thesis statements. It wouldn't hurt for you too to um, use an essay that you've already written. Perhaps you've done a task earlier this year. Um, go and grab that and look at what you've done. How did you identify those key ideas? What thesis did you have? And how did you build that into your introduction? You could go through and look at your essay that you've written and go and find where you've signposted the keywords of the question. Find where you are um, actually addressing the question. Have you done that? You've uh, addressed it at the start of the essay and the end and there's not much in the middle. And look at ways of building that. Um, it's always good to start with something that you've already written. If you've got something in front of you, it's, um, it's easy to go and modify. And you might think, well, I don't have to study that anymore. But the process is the important thing. Getting that process right um, is going to set you up really well in the future. And it's what a lot of students don't do. And I'll guarantee you that the good students are doing that. They're, they're going, they're, they're planning, they're writing, they're submitting their work, and they're getting um, their marks and a, a comment back. And then they're applying that. They're actually looking at what they've done and, um, and, and then going and fixing it up. And all that is building that wealth of experience and that's what leads to quality responses in English. So good luck.